Good morning, everybody. Thanks for walking over for the ones that made it. I hope you maybe joined my colleague session about the pro management portal. And I know it's a long walk, so maybe a few more people coming in. Otherwise, we make this a kind of a more cozy session. I can take more questions, etc. I'm totally cool with that, and they're also recording it. So my name is Christian Schacht. I'm a product manager lead in the Microsoft Teams Devices Group. Um, my focuses are BYOD rooms, hot desking, um, Teams peripherals, speaker attribution in rooms, as well as the feature that you maybe have seen in the keynote with voice isolation and enrollment of face on and voice profiles. Um, today, we like to speak a little bit about desks and BYOD rooms. So what are we doing in this area? Um, and what, what is new there? How can it help you? We did run a little poll before um, this session where a lot of people said, hey, I maybe already have um, MTR meeting rooms. Maybe I have a mix. Some of you, I think, said they don't have any MTRs um, right now. Um, and then, obviously, we will also go into desks. Um, I'd like to give you a quick overview. And if you have been in the session yesterday with Ilya and Henrika, you might have seen this picture already. So this is really how we see the world from a team's perspective or shared spaces um, world, right? And when, when we really start there, there are the classical um, meeting rooms that are great fits for team's rooms, right? And Enrique explained also yesterday what you see in the right corner there is what we call our signature room, which is how we envision the future of team's rooms where you have this eye-to-eye -eye contact as well. Um, and then more traditional team's rooms when you maybe don't have the budget right now to refurnish rooms or just like to swap out the meeting technologies to a little bit smaller rooms, which then more goes into the entry level of Teams rooms. When we switch over to what is bring your own device, um, it's different things for us, right? It could be uh, bring your own device rooms where you maybe just put a speaker park, maybe put a camera, maybe there's just a TV or maybe there's nothing, right? So that's really what we define as a BYOD room with shared devices in there. And how can that help and how can we help you manage those devices? You will see here in a little bit. Um, and then, then it goes over to what we call bookable shared desks, right? So people are coming back to their offices. Um, and you, as an admin, most likely would like to see how are those spaces used? Is there any problems? People might like to do reservations. Other people make reservations and they don't show up if you use um, already booking systems for that. So we can help you also, also with all of that. And then obviously we have the whole area with Teams desktops um, where either people that have assigned spaces in the office or they use uh, their devices at home where we have a whole portfolio of certified peripherals to make their meeting experience also great. So I put this slide in here um, because first of all, we had a major milestone last week during our earning call. We announced that we now have one million Teams rooms. So whatever you hear in that session about BYD rooms, it's also for us a stepping stone and to help you to deploy more Teams rooms, right? So it's kind of a little bit of an engine um, to start managing BYD rooms and bring you a step closer um, to kind, kind of the goal there to have a Teams room experience with a dedicated compute. Okay. So what, so jump here a little bit in. Um, so we have 320 million active Teams users, and they're using all kinds of stuff in those little spaces, right? They really, um, while we doubled our, our Teams rooms, again, many, many customers just put something in those rooms. Sometimes you don't even know. Um, we had a bunch of customers, we asked, do you have BYD rooms? And they said, no, we don't have any. A week later, they said, oh, actually, we just found a few. Right? And that was more by a coincidence because some of the users maybe complained about the room. Hey, this room doesn't, doesn't work proper. And the admin didn't even have any knowledge that someone bought a speaker pack, let's say, on one of the shopping websites and just put it in there. And that speaker pack was really bad. And IT had really no insights here. And there is a lot of those spaces, right? So when, when you really look here, there's so many BYOD spaces still out here that, as I said, only maybe just have a compute. Uh, sorry, that only have a TV. Some of them might have been cameras. In the best cases, there are cameras that are certified. In the best cases, there are maybe um, a video bar that basically gives you the microphones, the speaker, and the bar. But there is a lot of underserved rooms that just don't have Teams rooms or any other what I call meeting rooms with a brain, basically something with, with a compute in there. So what are we trying to do uh, with our BYOD project? So BYOD um, is really... There's a lot of struggles, and I prepared demos, which is risky on this network here, but we will see how it works, so bear with me. But I can show you what are typical pitfalls with 
or what have been typical pitfalls before with BYOD. So we do some user improvements here, how to make the experience better so that they can present really in confidence and get a little bit of a better experience. Then the next step on the journey is basically, hey, after we identify those rooms, to also give you an insight, hey, those devices are really not good. They're non-certified devices, they create a lot of trouble, and how can we bring that data together, which was invisible until today for you to really identify such a device as a, as a bigger problem here. Um, making those devices then visible for the admin, we have a little, yeah, almost crowdsourcing. I don't like to say full inventory, but you will see how those devices can be discovered in your environment to really help you. What are the next steps? What are really my pain points? And how can I move um, to the next best step here? And then to give you usage data, right? Today, if I go into, into a BYOD room um, and I have a bad call, what will happen? Christian had a bad call. The admin might not care much. The admin might just say, oh, Christian was maybe on that conference and had a bad network. My colleague goes into the same room, also has a bad, um, a bad calling experience. There is no correlation today. So we help you to build that correlation so that you can really tackle it down and, and um, click on the insights and see, hey, it's actually this room that all those users have problems. Grabbing from, if you're familiar with CQD, basically grabbing that data from, from, from those different call records and consolidating it for you as one view that says, hey, it was this room that has the problem. Send someone there, maybe put a new device, maybe update the firmware in the future, and so on, and really make the experience there better. So again, so this is almost, almost the best case what you can already have in a BYD room. You know, it can be any kind of combinations of those. Maybe um, someone just put a speaker pack in there and there's no video. Maybe there's a speaker pack in the camera. Maybe, as I said, there is a video bar. Sometimes it's just a TV, right? Um, that people just plug in and they use their mic and speakers from their laptop. They will not have the best experience if you do that in a room with, I don't know, five, six people and everyone speaks into one laptop. That will not be a great experience. But we can show you that now and can tell you, hey, this room is highly utilized. Maybe you should put something in and invest some dollars to make that experience for users better as well. Um, and then Teams panels, and maybe a short, a quick raise hand on who of you already deployed Teams panels. That's good. Who of you have any other scheduling uh, solutions? Alex, why are you raising the hand for everything? Huh? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so even for us, um, a Teams panel, and I have a dedicated slide for it, you can use on your rooms when you have an MTR, but also on rooms that just have nothing, right? So just you to have it a bookable space, to have that experience for users, they can walk up there and um, quick, quickly book a room, and we can also provide you some of the insights then, then here as well. Okay, so what are we doing? So here's a little giphy, but I will also um, try to demo it based on the network. Let's see how that goes. Um, but basically what we are doing is, if you plug in the cable, we already can detect hey, there is an audio device um, got, plug, got plugged in. When we also detect in a screen, we will pop out what we call our shared, shared display mode, which gives you a cleaner output. And if you think about it, I guess every one of you has used PowerPoint before. PowerPoint is doing something really similar, right? So you're in a duplicated screen mode. The moment you hit present in PowerPoint, it basically switches your screen to extended mode, pops the slide out, and you keep clean with your speaker notes. Right? So really similar, that was really one of the, yeah, of the things that, that we looked in, worked also closely with the PowerPoint team, um, because we believe that is something users are already familiar and they shouldn't be too surprised um, if we introduce something like that in Teams as well. Um, and it really fixes also that if you're just in this shared, uh, sorry, in this duplicate mode, and I mess around, maybe I get a chat message, or maybe I like to quickly ping a colleague we don't, because I don't like, uh, know the answer in the meeting, Everyone in the room would see that, and I'm basically exposed. So I always said to my colleagues, hey, in today's BYOD um, world, you kind of sacrifice, right? Someone needs to sacrifice their laptop for the meeting because they are out of the game for the rest of the meeting. They cannot really use it. They cannot multitask. They cannot quickly look something up. They don't have speaker notes anymore. And those are all the things that we are really trying to fix with the shared display mode. Then here also support intelligent speakers. So if you saw the keynote, um, on Tuesday from Jeff, you saw all this, hey, there were a bunch of people in the meeting rooms, and their name got identified in the meeting and put with their names into the transcript. 
So we are bringing that also to our BYD solutions, and I will tell you why. Today what happens when I plug in my laptop and Henrika and Alex are with me in the room, everything is under Christian. If they say something bad, it's in the transcript under Christian. When they say something bad, um, I, I, will, I will get all the trouble in, in the recap, in the transcript, and in the co-pilot answers. So we need to change that, right? With really bringing in co-pilot, it will be super key that we can say, hey, this is what Alex says, this is what Henrika said, this is what Christian said. So really excited to bring that also to BYOD devices here. Um, and then the device discovery and inventory, and we will double click on that, and if I pray to the demo gods, the demo will work. Um, okay, so here a little bit in a nutshell again. So shared display mode um, is really this pop-out stage. There's no additional license needed for any um, for, to, for, for this pop-out stage. That comes just, uh, just with the team's core license. Everyone can use it and get familiar with it, right? And we see already there's a lot of people really excited about it and using that. Support for intelligent speaker coming next half, right? Um, we will start, or we will at the same time support those special hardware intelligent speakers, but as well any microphone that, are, that is basically available, um, and really provide that experience so that we can that we can split up the voices, distinguish them, but also attribute and identify them there as well. Um, the, ad, the admin portion of that, I will show you, there is where we give you already some really good insights so that you can see, hey, what peripherals do I even have, what are potential rooms, et cetera, which comes without a license. You just need to have access or activate already the pro management portal. Um, and then to getting deeper insights, there will be a license required for getting really this real usage how bad is the quality, et cetera. Um, and then it's supported on, uh, actually here it's saying um, Teams for Mac coming in second half. Um, I actually got a message this morning. We're rolling it out really fast, so you, I think you can expect it in the next, the next three to four weeks. It should, be, um, it should be available then also on Mac. Right now it is on Windows. Okay. Let's see if my demo works. So I put my PC here in, I think, what is typical or most people will have if they walk into a meeting room, they plug in their shared, um, they plug in the, the TV in that case, and then they go ahead uh, they go ahead and join a meeting. And I will jo first join the meeting wrong um, so that, that I can show you a little bit um, of, of the trouble that usually happens, right? So I am just join, join the meeting as always. And you can see all the stuff that I would multitask, right? Of course, now I can put myself um, into extend mode, can try to move the window over. Um, if you ever try to control your mouse on a um, your mouse cursor on an external screen, you know how painful it is, and sometimes also delayed, and to target the right buttons, and it's not it's not actually as a as a good experience. I will now do the portion that failed the most when I tried this earlier for my upload. Okay. Let's see if it works. It's a really, I made a really small, small PowerPoint for this. Let's see, let's see. Okay, there we go. So, and here, here you basically see, see the next problem, right? So if you are now with people in a room, everyone would also see your speaker notes. It's great, the remote people don't see them, but the people with you in the room, in the old world, would see um, the speaker notes that they are not supposed to say, right? oh, I should really avoid to talk with my boss about this and my boss is with me in the room. Well, that's not the best experience here, right? And that is really where the PowerPoint team also came to us and say, hey, Christian, there are so many BYOD users out there that just duplicate their screen and they're not using PowerPoint Live because everyone can see the notes, right? So they really identified that here as a blocker, so something that we really need to fix. Okay, that was the bad example, right? And now let me show you what we did. So I join the same meeting again, but this time I do something different. I click on room audio. And if you already have MTRs, you know that section hopefully very well. That is also where proximity join shows up, right? Where you would see all the rooms that are in, uh, that's close by. We are Bluetooth and very soon we are ultrasound as well. So we extended that category and also show you here up USB audio devices. So if someone comes in, plugs in their speaker pack, like I did here with my beautiful Jabra Speak 75. I hope Jabra is proud of me to mention it. Um, I can select it. But as you can see here, there's something else interesting. How the heck does my PC know that that is the conference room items? That is what we will get to in the, in the admin portion. So 
what we really try here to do is the familiar user experience that you can teach your users, hopefully, right? That you can say, if you come to a meeting room, it doesn't matter if it is an MTR or if it is a BYD, click on the room section and select the room you're in, right? Because we also know that a lot of, cut, uh, a lot of end users they might not even know what is a BYD room, what is an MTR room, and they shouldn't really care. All they should care about, get me in my meeting, <laughs> right? They have more important stuff to do than worrying, is this a BYD room, is this an MTR Android, is this an MTR Windows? It's really about, hey, get me into my meeting. So for you, basically, I would plan for user adoption for them. Click on room audio and click, click on the right room, regardless if it is an MTR or USB device. Okay, so now let me join. And now what you can see is some magical stuff happened here. We pushed the PC automatically into the shared, in the, in the extent mode, create a new window, put that on the external screen, and full sizes. Okay? So if I, as example, open, open the chat panel, right? So in the, if, if I just duplicate my screen, everyone would see also the input box um, and what I typed there, and maybe Everyone looks at my screen, I get more nervous, I make a lot of typos, you know. So we only show now the output on that shared screen. I still have the compose box here on my laptop over here, so I can type, can search for Givy, whatever, you know, and I put it here in, and, then, and then people see it. Um, does it also suppress uh, like notifications? It does. Well, in this case, yes, we are not doing too much of the, um, notification suppression because it's the secondary screen and notifications go to the first screen anyways. But meeting notifications, we make sure that they would show up here so that the people in the room can keep in the loop, um, you know, when people in the chat say, oh, this presentation is great or this presentation is not so great. So those would show up as, um, as toast messages basically, basically on, or yeah, as toast messages from, from the top here as well. Same then also for the roster, right? So if I open, okay, my PowerPoint just reacted. So let's see, maybe we still get the PowerPoint portion. There we go. Just took a little bit on the network. Um, so now you can see where you um, earlier saw all the, all the speaker notes, et cetera. Now it's clean, right? So same view basically for the, for the in-meeting in persons um, than for the remote person. So the clean output, you can have a good presentation. You can still use your speaker notes. You can still ink around from your laptop and so on. And you get, um, and you get this view then. Also here, what you now can see is on the right, the participants list, right? Because obviously you've raised hands. You'd still like to... Um, have visibility for everyone in the room because maybe it's you driving, uh, maybe it's you that we that uses the laptop to power this, but maybe someone else that is speaking really driving and saying, "Hey, Hendrika, you raised your hand," and so on. Um, so again, here as well, we remove the invite new people and all those controls and keep it clean to just have um, the output and visibility for everyone here. So this is what you just saw. So this was more or less my backup slides if the demo really totally fails. It shows here the room name. I will show you how that works. If you have not used the admin portion yet or assigned a room to a certain device, it will just show the device. It will just show, hey, there's a Jabra Panacast. User selects it and gets all the same goodness on the, on the, on the experience here as well. This is what I saw basically on my client on the laptop here. It's where I have all the controls, so I can still hang up, kick people out of the meeting, pin people, create a new sharing, can also share my desktop, etc. So it becomes kind of a controller for the meeting, and the clean output is then on the front of the room TV screen. This is how my PowerPoint looked, so I also put it in here so that you can see how, how, how it looks in that example. Clean output front of the room, I have all the speaker notes, the control to go back and forth, ink on the PowerPoint, etc. So again, everything under my control here on, on my laptop. That was the user experience, right? So that's out there. Everyone can use it. Even if you're not in a room, you can try it out at, ho um, out at home. All you basically need is some sort of an audio device and an external screen, and you can get into that experience, right? So if you haven't tried it out, please try it out and provide us feedback there as well. Okay, now on the admin portion. So we are trying to help you here to identify those devices and those spaces. And this is what happens here under the hood. So the moment someone plugs in a USB device, which is a, right now it's an audio speaker, or plugs in a TV, we look for the serial number for those devices. We take the serial number and send it up to the pro management portal. But to know 
I mean, I have a lot of OG devices at home. They should never show up to our admin, hey, this is a BYD one. So what we're also doing is we're saying, hey, we need to at least see five unique users that use that serial number before we put that in front of an admin, right? So that you don't get all the headsets, all the speaker parks, and all the TVs and monitors from people at home. We don't like to see them. We don't care about them. We like to identify shared spaces. So after five users then have used that device, they will show up in the pro portal in the device's inventory tab. And you can start your work with that. You can say, I assigned that to a room. Oh, this is a desk. Um, and assign them to a certain, re re um, basically, resource account or workplace account to gain more insights there. And don't worry if that was fast. I will show you how that works. This is the new tab here in inventory. If you're, how many of you are using the Pro Portal already? Well, that's not too many, actually. Um, <laughs> okay. You should. Um, so mostly customers with MTRs hopefully use it already, and they are really familiar with this portal. If you don't, that's not a big problem. You can um, get a free trial license of our Team Shared Devices license, which gives you access to this portal, right? You can sign up for the 30-day, uh, 25 users, and you can get access to this portal. Even if you don't have a Teams room, but to see, hey, what's going on with my devices and get a first taste of it, again, there is a free um, trial license to get access to that. You go to the, um, great, I removed the URL in the HTTPS, um, but I think it's, Alex, what is it, rooms.microsoft.com? You will see it in my demo, it's fine. Um, I, I just remembered I will show it anyways. But, um, so, and, go, in, and if you have a, one of those licenses in your tenant assigned to one user, you will get access to this portal. If you go to the URL, it will say, hey, I will spin up this instance for you, and the whole, and the whole magic can begin. So here you see now in the inventory tab devices is where those discovered devices that reach the threshold of five users will end up. There's one important other thing. You can see here, sure, these are mostly audio devices. We already know some monitors and TVs provide really bad serial numbers. And they might be just old. So a TV might be just, I don't know, 15 years old, 10 years old, and you still use it in the room. We are trying to read it via the EDIT protocol, and some TVs just give back zero or some dummy numbers, right? So not every TV has a good serial number, but don't worry about that. As long as there's one device in the room that has a proper serial number, let's say there's a combination of a TV, a speaker pack, and a camera, as long as one of those three devices give us a good serial number, you can use this feature. We also now filter out bad serial numbers that we are already aware of, right? So that was a recent change we did over the last couple of weeks, because in the beginning, if you have maybe tried that out when it was in public preview, we showed you a bunch of TVs that had a zero, a double zero as a TV, and we already know that's not a good serial number, so they will not even show up anymore, right? Or there's also one really famous um, dummy serial number, I think it starts with 69 something, that basically we saw across Samsung TVs, LG TVs, Sharp TVs, so they are also filtered out. So it could happen that some of your displays and TVs that you would expect to show up will not show up because their serial number is just bad. I personally spoke with most of the TV manufacturers by now and really backed them, hey, for your new TVs, how will you handle serial numbers? And they all said, we will be good in the future. It's basically just those old TVs that have bad serial numbers. They would be willing to provide firmware updates, but how many of you are going into a meeting room and update the firmware on a TV? Most likely no one. We all do that at home because it's a smart TV and we like to watch uh, streaming apps. But in meeting rooms, no one really does it because you just plug in an HDMI, they're not network connected, etc. So in that cases, again, don't worry too much about it. You can plug in, in that case, um, um, there might be already a speaker park or a camera. And in the future, we will also start to support docking stations. Right now, we don't support docking stations and the serial number from the docking station, but that is a high priority item on our list to say, hey, if you put a docking station anyways in, maybe to get a single cable solution, we can use that docking station um, serial um, to get you that uniqueness in the room. Okay, back into action here. So all of those rooms now are saying, hey, needs action. That just basically means, hey, they have not been assigned to a room or a desk quite yet, and you can go ahead and do that. So in this case, you just press the little, hey, um, assign a room button here, and you go into your basically directory, so it's all the room resource accounts 
um, that, that you have an exchange already created, it pulls from that same list, and you can say, hey, this is a certain room. Okay, but seeing is believing, let me try my second demo. So this is the pro portal, and it's portal.rooms.microsoft.com. So that is the URL you want to go um, to try all of that out. If I go here, and this is obviously a demo tenant. There we go. Okay, so if I go here into planning, inventory, and now do devices, and I put a bunch of dummy data in here as well. But those are basically devices that have been, um, that has been discovered, right? <laughs> and now you see here a fantastic example, which is true for many customers, that put something like a Jabra Panacast P50 into those BYD rooms. It seems to be a really famous device, along obviously Poly and uh, Yearlink and other devices. But you can see here there's a bunch of those devices. And this already helps you, you know, to say, hey, what's even going on? You turn the Pro Portal tool on, you let it run for, I don't know, two, three weeks, right? And you will see more and more devices coming in here. And you can see here on top, hey, there were, have been 63 devices discovered over, over a certain amount of time um, since you turned it on. Um, don't panic too much. So this list can become really big. I think at Microsoft, this is at 70,000 discovered devices right now. Um, so because we have a lot of devices, we have a lot of BYD rooms, we have a lot of desks, you know, where we put screens on, where we have speaker packs in rooms, etc. This is not a task list for you, right? Don't worry if you never get it to zero. It really doesn't matter. You should use this tool a little bit differently, and I will show you how. Um, so when you have already, and some customers have, including Microsoft, luckily, so when we have an installer that installs those BYD rooms, they have a task on the end. They write down the room name that they installed it. They write down the serial number, and they put it in an assessment tool that we have. If you are that lucky and you have an assessment tool, you have it way easier to associate those devices because you already have no serial numbers. And what you can basically do here, you can then, let me actually do manually. Oops, right, take a serial number like this. And you can say here, hey, I like to look for a serial number. And, the, and it will show up the device. And now I know, hey, this actually device is potentially in a certain room here, let's say it would be in conference room Crystal, and basically your work is done here. I will show you what to do if you're not that lucky, okay? Um, if you don't have that data yet, I have some fantastic colleagues who wrote a PowerShell um, example script, right? So we do it as a kind of an open source. You can use it, you can modify it, whatever works for your best. Um, so I did already put that over here in my PowerShell um, editor, and I will show you what that can do for you um, to figure out those serial numbers from the rooms. Um, and we did that in some of our rooms because, believe it or not, our assessment data is okay, but people already swapped stuff around. Maybe they replaced the speaker pack. It's not the serial number anymore. That isn't the big Excel sheet that they gave me. Um, so it's also a good, um, yeah, a good thing to maybe verify if those devices are really where you think they are. So what this PowerShell does, if I just fire it up, and I can zoom a little bit more in, is basically say, hey, um, please connect now the BYD device. So what we did in our building 35 is um, we sent someone, and I think some customer told them sneaker admins or whatever, um, and in that on that day, I was the sneaker admin that went to seven different rooms doing this. Um, so you basically go to the room, start the script, right? Then it says, hey, now plug everything in that is in this particular room, which I will do now. I hit enter. It does a timer of 15 seconds because it just takes, takes a little while until USB devices are recognized and so on. Um, what it did before that, it looked at the devices, what is currently in your, in your laptop, because maybe you still have your, I don't know, your headset connected or you have an internal camera, which we really don't like to assess in this room. And then it looks for the new devices that have been plugged in um, and asks me, hey, in which room you actually are. So I can say I may be in huddlecontoso.com and I'm in huddle. Um, don't worry too much about the grouping. Um, this can be helpful if you um, yeah, have, have different sets 
um, as well. So by default, you can just leave that on. on now. Um, you can leave, I will leave the default path for now here. And now it tells me, hey, the device that I found that you told me is in huddle room um, so-and-so is this product ID, this vendor ID, and this serial number. So now I can do a little task. And again, after I did the first seven rooms, we had um, some other people that walked around and assessed basically the whole building with about 40 BYD rooms. Um, we had as the admins then a nice list, which we, auto which we then could import into the pro portal. And I will show you what to do next um, with this data. So it basically spills me this out as a CSV file here. Um, and because it is important for you, so for, for an import, you need three things for sure, which is the product ID of the product, which is the, the vendor ID of the product, and which is the serial number of, of, of that particular device. And then you can import it. And if you like to assign it to a room, you will need um, the email address or what we call um, the UPN here as well. So let me do here, and this is a CSV file, so you need to do one thing, you save it as, an, as, a, as a proper Excel file. Um, at the same time, you can also here in the portal say, hey, give me an export of what you already gathered as information, right? So it will create now an export of all the stuff that came together in the last, in the last couple of weeks when my users use those rooms. So this Excel export looks like this. So you have rooms that I already assigned in the past. And if you click on peripherals, you see all the stuff that has been discovered. Again, that more than five users used, that will show up here. You see, I did already some work and assigned a few rooms. Um, and obviously, you maybe will see that some of the zero numbers are dummies that I just counted up on an import before, as on, on, on the Jabra devices. But this gives you a lot of insights. This basically means, hey, I like to get started with Teams rooms. What is even my status today? How many devices do I already have? Do I have already a lot of devices that are Teams room certified that I can maybe, and the Jabra Pendercast, again, my, my beloved example here, I could say, okay, these are 10 or 12 uh, Jabra Pendercasts. I can just add an MTR. I'm already halfway there. Why am I not just adding an MTR and get, and, 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 and get to the next step here? And again, this output and how the discovery works, you don't need to get out of your seat as an admin. This will just come in. Um, what I'm doing here now is that I can take from, from, from my little export here and basically take this data and copy it over here. If I now go back and import into the portal again, it will be associated to that room. If I only have one room and I know where the serial number is, obviously I can do how I did it before. I do just in UI search for one serial number. This is more meant you either did um, the whole assessment of a whole building already, so you like to mass import all of that. Um, you maybe have an assessment tool, you run an export there, bring it all together, import it, etc. So this is the, hey, you already have good data or someone walked, walked with the script around. Um, and it becomes really powerful also for desks. We will speak about desks in a second, and it works the same, right? You maybe have a desk pool in a room that has, I don't know, in a corner that has 30 desks. You go quickly from desk to desk. It works really fast. It shouldn't take longer than a minute on every desk running that little script that I just showed you. Um, you take the data, import it, and all of those desks are assigned. You walk through a building. I think it took them an hour to do about 40 rooms here. Um, I think with two people, they did it and you have all the data, and you can import it back in, in, into the pro management tool. Um, but now you might wonder, why do I like to do that even, right? So on the room side, there's also something new here on reports, where is, um, actually they need, my devs need to remove the preview tag, it's out of preview now. Um, those rooms will start to show up here, right? So those are BYD rooms that have been, been assigned. This is a demo tenant. I didn't do enough calls um, that something would show up here, but believe me, when calls coming in, they are showing up here. And here's exactly what I said before. So Christian used the, used the device in conference room Adams. Uh, yeah, you used the device there with that serial number. The tool knows, okay, this is conference room Adams, and Christian used it. Let me check the call record. There was call activi activity. How was the quality? It fetches it and adds it here. 
Alex on the next day used the room, it does the same thing and really consolidated here and gives you an insight, hey, how is the, is the call quality in that room? How is the utilization? Again, remember, if you have an MTR, there's a little agent on it. If someone unplugs a cable, you get an alert, which is awesome. On BYOD, there's no compute in the room, but what you can do is here, if you know, hey, this room conference um Adams, usually is really well booked and people using that 80% of the time. But I haven't seen any activity the last two days. Basically means something is wrong with the room and you should send someone to figure out what's going on. Um, and some of you have, might have heard me say that example. Um, we have a beautiful office in Vancouver. Beautiful rooms and there is a few really nice um, hot desking rooms that everyone can grab and they're usually gone at 8.30 because those are the little single rooms, not outside in the open space. And that morning I came in there maybe at 10 and that room was free. I was like, hmm, how is that possible? That's great, my favorite room is free. Come in, plug everything in, nothing works. I plug everything out and go somewhere else. Because that was the reason that no one used that room because it wasn't functional, right? The screen, something was broken with a docking station or whatever. Did I report it? I didn't, right? Because I had to go to a meeting. I don't, I don't have time to call IT, oh, this desk is broken, you should send someone, right? So that is also really one of the goals. The same can happen in a room because your users most likely go in, stuff doesn't work, they walk out and go to the next room. And we will provide you those insights now, right? In the first step, you will see it here in reports. Later, we will bring in that you also can get alerts of when stuff doesn't match anymore how the patterns were in the past. It really say, all those desks, no one is using them anymore. Send someone, right? Go and check out what's going on. Those rooms are not getting used anymore. Send someone, check what's going on. And this is also supposed then really to help you, you know, to say, hey, where should I invest my money? Where do I get out the most of my money? Because outside Microsoft, we have budget limitations on how many rooms we can upgrade each quarter to MTRs. We just cannot say, hey, let's do all our global rooms um, in one shot. So our IT also looks in the data now and said, hey, those rooms are performing the worst. Let's tackle them first. Or those rooms are used the most, let's tackle them first. Whatever works and this is the right strategy for you, this will give you now that insight. And also, if you go back to your stakeholders and ask for more budget, you can say, look, last quarter I upgraded those rooms. I got it from this quality to this quality. My users are more happy and you really have something to prove that the investment that the company makes in those rooms works and has a proper output. Okay, we spoke about that. Um, and we are also planning on, I cannot tell you too much but we are looking to get more to a concept out, um, what I call don't get out of the seat anymore. Because in all examples you saw here, someone was already in the room, either wrote an installation, the serial number down, or someone walked around with the script. Our goal is really to get to a concept to get more signals and to predict to you, oh, where could this desk, where could this equipment be? So to make the association for you easier. So we will put a big focus on that in our second half of the year as well. Okay, we spoke about all of that. We will provide you also more tips in the futures. We'll really say, hey, um, if you see, if you have an active record and exchange already, like, hey, this is a 16 people room, this is a 24 people room, and you assign it as a BYD, we most likely will give you a tip, huh, I guess this would be good, uh, a good candidate to make the team's rooms um, directly instead of driving to power it with a small, um, with a small speaker pack or something. And we can also tell you, you know, as part of our team certification program, we really tell you as customers how big should a conference room be. That speaker pack that I, that I used here, well, that cannot power a 20 people boardroom or something, right? So that might just create a really bad experience, um, but we can help you with that. Also, if you, and this is not limited, all, all of what I showed you is not limited to certified devices because we like to show you the bad rooms. We like to show you the bad speaker packs, the bad stuff, and what it creates on the quality end, so that you can do the next step. Even if you say, I have some budget, but I'm still not ready for MTR yet, at least we can guide you then and say, buy something certified that can become an MTR maybe in the future. Buy something certified where we can tell you this works great in a large room, this works great in a mid-size room, um, and guide you there more instead of just having you in the wild and buying something which then um, will be really terrible for your user experience. Okay, I showed you this. Um, here, maybe that's a, um, a better picture of when it has actually a little bit um, more usage and it's not in my demo tenant. 
but it will give you utilization that's just based on a on a scheduling from um, from eight to five. How how are those rooms used from Monday to to Friday? We will also invest um, a lot more there because we got really strong feedback not only on BYD but also on the MTR side. Hey, it's great that you show me that my rooms are. Um, how they are utilized over the whole week. But what is really interesting for me is um, what are the hotspots? What are really the, the, the critical times? It doesn't matter that the conference room is empty at eight. You know, I don't care about that because, but my, my, my most busiest time are maybe 10 and 11. And that's when I run out of, um, out of meeting rooms or desks and people arrive in the office say, okay, there's no space for me. Um, and they go home again. So we will change that a little bit more to, hey, what are, what are, the, what are the peak times and do you still have enough rooms, do you still have enough desks, um, et cetera, for those times. I saw something on Instagram where someone was saying, like, I went to the office, the parking lot was full, and I thought, oh, they have enough people today, and I went home. Um, so that's, that, that is something I think that to a lot of people happen, still, still happens. You come into the office and you cannot find a desk, right? So, and you should be able to plan for those scenarios. Okay, so now you discovered all that stuff and you say, oh, I have some budget. I can make some of those rooms now, full MTR rooms. Um, so we partnered up here with MaxHub and Yearling for um, having yeah, kind of starter kits for below $1,000, right? And I think the MaxHub is $799. Um, I didn't put that onto the slide, but I think it's $799 where you get the compute and the console. And now you have those audio devices already. You add this thing for $7.99 and you can get the full Teams, the Teams Rooms experience and go basically to the next step. Here. Teams panels, I asked you earlier who has them already. And um, so just for those that haven't raised their hand, um, what does it give you? A user walks up to a, um, walks up to a BYD room, uh, walks up to a room. They can clearly see, hey, is first of all, am I at the right room? Is this the right reservation? Are rooms available? Um, and can make a quick reservation either via QR code or by pressing the button. Also has a good functionality if people don't show up and they don't check in on the device, you can release the rooms, right? So to avoid those ghost bookings, and because if you are short on meeting rooms, you don't like to have people just book, book, uh, booking a room just in case, and then your other employees cannot find any of this. Why did I put that all here as well? Because for the insights, for BYOD, you will need um, what we call the Team Shared Devices License, which is list price $8 a month. But it also comes with, you can always add a panel as well. So you get kind of a two-in-one package. You can put a peripheral and a panel, and it's still $8. Okay, bookable desks. So all of that, because now you will say, he only spoke about BYOD. All of this discovery process and all you said applies to both, to desks and BYOD rooms. What changes is the end user experience that you get out. So let's quickly speak about the desks. So on the desks, um, and you might have heard about Microsoft Places, and they will create a great booking experience, et cetera. And we are kind of, we are powering how that works on the devices and what, and to define kind of what is a desk and how to identify them, right? So I will not show you anything about booking, but I will show you what happens if, um, so, sorry. I will not show you anything about booking in advance because that will be more in currently Outlook and Places topic in, in the future. Um, but I show you how we automatically book or check in basically to, to a desk when you come here. I think there is a little giphy on that. Here. So again, same thing. User comes in, plugs in on, their, on, 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 um, on that bookable desk. And if there wasn't a reservation, Teams will automatically give you, hey, this space is now reserved for you. Because you assigned the desk the same way that I showed you earlier in the pro portal as well, and it will do this reservation for you. If you have done the booking in before, okay, so in this case it says, hey, this is reserved. Um, right now it just reserves till the end of the day, which we define as five. We will make that more adjustable for admins that, or, or that, that users can also book basically smaller portions by now. Um, it will be till, till 5 p.m. Um, and if you then check in, uh, sorry, if you already booked and plug in, the notification slightly changes here and said, hey, now, now you're checked in um, on, on, on this desk here as well. Does that make sense so far? Okay, that's good. Um, so we also have booking devices, right? So there's also... 
all of that, what I showed you there with just checking in, et cetera, that can be just a monitor on, this, uh, on, on, on that desk. Again, same as with BYD. We discovered that serial number for monitor. Monitor serial numbers actually are a little bit better than TV monitors, so we see a lot of manufacturers where those serial numbers are just great. But you can also add a device if you like to. And this is the Logidoc Flex, um, it's called, which is a nice little docking station that also would show you reservations or shows you um, if, if a certain desk is available. So a user could also walk around and say, oh yeah, this one is free, let me plug in, let me reserve, or use, use the device to make the reservation here as well. It's also a great way to do single cable solutions um, to really give this one, this one plug solution. Um, a lot of you answered that hot desks, I think, mostly deployed um, in conjunction with a docking station anyways. So you might have already some kind of docking station. But I have wrote, okay, and the ones in my team, they might smile about that. I went to the office on Friday, I went to a desk, I tried to use this, and there was no USB-C cable anymore. So I got really angry, wrote to the whole team, I hope you enjoy your new USB-C cable, this desk is now unusable. Um, in that case, I reported that the desk was broken, unlike my other example with Vancouver. Um, but so, so some of those newer devices, they have a little bit more cable protection as well. So on this device, as example, people cannot take out the USB-C cable, right? It's protected with the Kensington, et cetera. And all of you that are using flexible desks, et cetera, might have a similar experience there. So my tip is like, look at something like this from Logitech, which gives you a great cable solution as well. Um, and people cannot steal the cables. It also gives you the visibility or look into docking stations that provide maybe a Kensington lock and don't have a, a loose USB-C cable that these days everyone tries to get to charge their phones, I guess, right? Here, in addition, a few resources on um, where have we already spoken about all of this, a few videos, et cetera. Um, the desk portion, so all of the BYD stuff I showed you is all um, in GA. So it's available to all of you. The good news is, the desk stuff I just showed you, we put into public preview now. So you can try that out in public preview now as well um, and can, can make the first steps there. The public preview right now does not include any reporting for desks, so that is still to come, but you can already assign those desks and um, have those ad, um, ad hoc reservations and, and check-ins that, um, that, that you saw on this. Okay, I have nine minutes left for questions. Questions? Yes. Oh, that was... Okay, I'll worry about it. Yeah. Where do you access the desk, uh, the desktop, uh, the uh, desk portion uh, where you set up your desk? Huh? Where, where is that? Portion? In the portal? I can show you. So this tab will also now start to show up. So what we're doing here is if they're defined in Exchange as workplace instead of a room, they will start to show up here. Okay. And when you like to assign them, you go on devices. Let me see what kind of like looks like. A, okay. Um, so you remember I, I selected rooms. Um, I, I selected a room in the other example here. But what you can also do, and we will make the UI, UI better again. It just went to public preview. Um, but you can basically select here. If you click in, you say place type, and then you say desks. And then all your desks in your Active Directory uh, show up, and you do, um, and you select the desk. So pretty similar. The only thing we haven't fixed up the UI yet that it would say, "Hey, is this a room or, or a desk?" In this case. Follow up question. Mm -hmm. In order to get those desks in there, we're putting them in Active Directory as a desk type instead of room. Yes, as a workplace. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, let me actually, I will, I will put that in the deck. Um, so actually, Prashi, who is um, handling all the desks, there should be documentation out right now, how, how it works exactly and what to select. Um, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good one. I will make sure we have that. Is there a map functionality with it where we can put the desks on the map? So, not from us. <laughs> yeah, and when I say not from us, I mean not from the team's devices side, and there are other groups uh, looking into that, and they will make their announcements around that. Yes? Is 
Okay, you have, okay. For, if you couldn't hear the question, is the panels for outside or inside of the room? And um, what, what are the functionalities? I think that's your question, right? So they are meant for being outside of the room. Um, well, they are, okay, let me rephrase, both. So for outside of the room, you have more the, hey, um, this is, I'm at the right room, it has a green LED, a red LED, and if I walk over a hallway and I'm, look, I'm in need for a room, I can say, okay, this, is, um, this room is free, I do an ad hoc reservation, scan your QR code, do reserve now, or whatever. Or if I already booked it, I do a check-in. Inside the room, we have some devices like um, the Crestun Media and more to come, where we use kind of that same experience as an ambient screen in the room, right? So if you have an MTR, then there's always, oh, this is the next upcoming meeting, and so on. And some of those devices will also um, start that, but there is then not really a functionality because it's just on the TV and the TV is not touched, right? Um, maybe you can do with the QR code, um, you can activate that, but there is no, no, no touch buttons on the TV. The same app, or a similar app, is then also what, what, what I showed here for the, for the bookable desks. It's, the base, it's basically the same platform, but in that case it knows, hey, this is more for a desk reservation. Reservations work a little bit different, like it's not, oh, on a room you would book for the next hour, on a desk you book for the end of the day, as an example. Thanks for showing up. I know it was a long walk from the other building as well. <laughs>